going to be such a comfortable thing to wear in the summer this jumpsuit design is inspired by a typical utility boiler suit silhouette and details and it's something I've been wanting to try out for a while, so I'm going to be doing that in this video. I'm going to be starting off with the patterns, and I've broken down this video into chapters because it's going to be a long and juicy one. So watch it at your pace. You can pause, you can rewatch bits that you don't really understand. So you take it at a pace that is comfortable for you. Now these are the measurements I suggest you take note of. So you have a fit that is perfect on your body or on your client. Now I'm going to be working from my basic pattern blocks because then I save time and these patterns are to my measurements already. Now I have my basic bodies front and back. This I already have a tutorial for. I also have a PDF pattern that goes from a UK size 6 to 16. If you wanted to grab that for yourself, that way you just have the basic block in place to adapt to future designs. I also have my basic sleeve. This I have made from a previous tutorial. I'm going to link all the tutorials in the video description down below if you haven't seen them already. And then I have my basic trouser block that already has has a fly extension this i've already done in a previous tutorial as well there is a pdf a trouser pattern on the kim dave store as well and i'm going to link all these mentioned videos and products in the video description for you guys to check out i always like to start from the top and i'm going to start in that order in this video too i have my basic bodice underneath this is the front and i'm going to be tracing off the center front edge the side seam the shoulder transferring the dots and then on the side seam i'm just going to essentially just square it up from the hemline or from the bottom all the way to that chest area and then i'm going to mark my desired top length mine is 16 inches so it's just where my waistline is then i'm going to draw in the new waistline for the top half of this jumpsuit once i was done doing that i'm going to go ahead to drop the neckline of my front this i'm going to be dropping by one inch because i intend to add a collar later on in this video once i have that round neckline drawn in place with the help of my pattern master i'm also going to draw in the arm curve and transfer the notch that indicates that this is the front arm curve this would help me when i am stitching in the sleeves towards the end of this project now I'm just going in here to draw in the front dart and this is what my front pattern is looking like. Because I want a zip on the center front edge, I'm going to be extending the center front by 2 inches or roughly 5 centimeters. That is going to become my fly. This jumpsuit has an elongated fly that goes from the top through the waistband and to the pants. That's how I plan to get in and out of the jumpsuit. Once I had added that extension, I'm just going in here to add my usual 1 centimeter seam allowance using my green pen so you guys can tell the difference from the stitch line, which is in the black, and the green, which is like the seam allowance i went ahead to cut out my front pattern added my annotations this i'm essentially just going to cut two off one for the left and one on the right i'm going to be using that front pattern i just did to create the back the back is going to have a good old straight center back edge it's going to have the same shoulder seam as the front so also going to have the same hemline and the same side seam so remember to transfer like the notches on the dart where the chest line is and then i'm also going to draw in the back arm curve which is shallower than the front once i have that in place i'm going to go in here to just add the notch for the back arm curve and then for my back neckline this is roughly 1.5 inches below the shoulder line and to get this i've just squared up the center back edge and the shoulder line so i have a corner and dropping 1.5 inches from that corner i'm drawing in my center back edge 
my back neckline is a lot higher compared to the front as you can see here now that i have my back pattern drawn in place i'm just going in here to transfer any necessary lines notches that i know i'm going to need especially the dart because that i'm going to gather into the waistline of the trouser the silhouette of this jumpsuit is kind of loose on the top fitted on the waist and loose on the legs so you want to ensure that the waistline is true to your size or true to your measurement Now I have my front and back patterns for the top half of the jumpsuit and if you have watched this far please give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and subscribe if you haven't joined the K Divas fam already. I post weekly videos all about sewing and fashion design on this channel. I'm going to move on to working on the collar pattern and I want a stand collar that sits round on the neckline now i have a bit of paper that i've placed over the front neckline and i'm just transferring that front neckline curve as well as the notches like so and then to ensure that the collar goes into my center back or the back neckline i'm going to be extending the collar upwards by the length of the back collar this i'm just going to measure using my measuring tape mine was roughly four inches and i'm going to extend that part of the collar upwards by four inches once i have that marked in place i'm just going in here to draw in the center back edge this i'm drawing in this direction like so and my collar itself is about 1.5 inches wide i wanted the collar not to be too wide so it says comfortably around my neck and this is going to be straight around the back and then follow the natural curve of the front neckline so to do that i'm just marking the 1.5 inch upwards from my front neckline that I have marked from the front of the top and then I'm connecting those points together and for the front edge of the collar I want it to round back into the front edge so it goes around and then back into the neckline once I have this drawn in place I plan on slashing this part of the collar because from past experience I've noticed whenever I walked with the collar just like that it ended up being too tight so once I had added my seam allowance, cut out my pattern, add my grain line, I'm going to go to that point that I drew earlier on and cut it open like so, leaving the bottom edge still connected because you want that bottom edge to be the same as the neckline of your top of the jumpsuit. This I'm going to be spreading by about 1 to 1.25 inches. I found that to be like a really sweet spot where it's snug enough around your neck but it's not too tight so you should be able to breathe comfortably. Once I had that spread, I'm just going to the bottom and the top edges to connect everything together so I have a nice and smooth edge on the collar, transferring that notch that we opened earlier on. I'm just going in here to cut off any excess paper that I don't need that is still attached to my collar pattern. This is what the color of the jumpsuit looks like. I would recommend double checking that it fits correctly to the neckline of your top. This, I, you can see that it has to go across this edge like that along the neckline. And then once it's been stitched up, it would curve naturally around your neck. The next pattern I'm going to work on is the sleeve. The sleeve pattern is very, very straightforward. I already have a sleeve block here and this sleeve block already has a sleeve seam allowance. My sleeve, I want it to be on the short side, so it's 10 inches long, but I'm double checking that the fit around the bicep and around the hem are to a fit that I like. I want it to be fitted, but not too tight. Once I was sure of that, I'm just going in here to transfer the side seam i'm going to also draw in the sleeve head transfer the notch for the front and the back of the sleeve because that is going to become very very helpful when i have to sew the sleeve into the actual jumpsuit itself i'm going in here to draw in the hemline double checking that both the left and the right side of this sides of the sleeve actually fit because this is something i've noticed from the past that one side will be longer than the other side and when you're sewing the sleeve you now have excess on one side so just double check that before you cut out your pattern i'm adding a hem allowance of roughly one inch and because i want that corner to fit really nicely i'm going to fold it upwards and draw in a corner 
that goes like so because when you fold up that hemline in this direction you want the corners to match naturally along the seam so once i had the corners drawn in place i'm going in here to add my grain line i'll also add my annotations like the name of the pattern how many pieces i need to cut before going ahead to cut out this sleeve pattern this is why having blocks are very very handy because it saves you so much time now that the sleeve is done i'm going to move on to creating the waistband waistbands i would say are handy when you make jumpsuits because they just make for a more comfortable fit especially around the crouch now i'm going to start by drawing a short horizontal line like so and the waistband length is half of my waistline plus half an inch of wearing ease this way you have a waistband that is fitted around your waistline but when you sit and when you eat it's still comfortable and i want that waistband to have the same two inch extension that the top has as well this i'm adding like so and i'm going to go ahead to add a seam allowance on the center front and on the center back edges and my waistband is 2.5 inches wide you can make yours wider or narrower it's up to you and the, your body shape as well if you're someone who has a shorter torso i recommend not making your waistband too wide whereas if you have a really nice long torso you can go ahead and make it as wide as you like i'm going in here to just draw in all the other lines that i need to connect my waistband piece together add my grain line information and the side that has the extension is going to sit on the front and the other side towards the right of the screen is going to sit on the center back of the jumpsuit this i'm going to cut two pairs for because i want it to have a nice clean finish on the inside and on the outside we have made it to the trouser portion of this tutorial now i have my trouser blocks front and back i'm going to be working from these these are already done to my measurements so i really don't have to think too much in terms of the fit around the waist and the hip so i'm just going in here to trace off the front pattern first this i'm going to trace off the extension this extension is the same dimension as the front and the waistband which is two inches and i'm going to trace off the center front line the side seam but i want my trouser to be wide on the leg so i actually made the leg wider by one inch on the inner and on the outer leg and i essentially just flared that out towards the hemline so it is fitted up until around the hips and then it's straight from the hip all the way to the hem you can make yours wider or even more fitted up to you to decide how you want the fit of your trouser to be don't forget to also transfer the dart along the waistline this is i'm essentially just going to pleat into the waistband but if you don't have that marked in place you won't know by how much you need to fold away your dart now before i cut out my pattern i'm just double checking my measurements i always like to do this even if i know the pattern is my size maybe when i was drawing something something shifted i would always double check with my tape before cutting out any pattern so i'm just adding a seam allowance on the outer leg because i noticed from my measurements that i just wanted it to be really nice and loose around the thigh and the leg before going ahead to cut out the front trouser pattern like i'm doing here now this is the shape of the front as you can see it's just fitted around the waist and it's essentially just a wide rectangular shape from the hip all the way to the hemline this i would say the around thigh measurement is 13 inches so if you multiply that by two you end up with 26 that's what the around thigh measurement was for the front moving on to the back similar to what i did for the front i'm tracing off the center back the waistline the hip up until around the thigh area and i'm going to make the leg of the back just as wide as i did for the front not forgetting to transfer the dart information along the waistline as well like i did for the front i am clearing out the outer leg from the hip outwards like so and i'm going to widen by the inner leg to this i'm going to keep it the same from the top and then go out by one inch towards the hip and then just straighten that out towards the hemline essentially it fitted around the top part and then it flares out towards the bottom i'm grabbing my front part and just to ensure that the front and the back have the same width especially around the hemline so it looks symmetrical to an extent i'm going to go ahead to draw in the hemline of my back trouser transfer the notch for the hip for the center back edge for the knee area as well as add a green line so that guides me when i'm cutting
about seeing the pattern and i'm also going to add my information saying that this is the back i need to cut two pieces one for the left and one for the right hand side and because my block already had seam allowance added in there i know i don't need to add extra seam allowance in the center back edge especially now once that pattern is all cut out i have the patterns at the bottom of the jumpsuit done but i want a pocket what is a jumpsuit without a pocket and this I'm going to be making an inseam pocket. This pocket is typically straight along the edge where the seam is and my pocket opening is 7 inches wide. I like to always draw in the shape by freehand because I find it really quick and easy to do and then I'll go ahead and connect those dash lines using my pattern master just to ensure that your pocket is wide enough to fit your hands and maybe add a little bit extra there in case you're putting your phone or your keys or your pocket so the pocket is nice and deep but is comfortable around your hands this i've added a one centimeter seam allowance around i've added a notch along the curved edge of the pattern and i've cut it out so this is what the pocket looks like with that those are all of the patterns for this jumpsuit done it took me a few good hours to make the patterns and i always like to take my time with making patterns because if you do them correctly you cut onto fabric sewing goes by a lot quicker i promise you now that i have my patterns done i'm going to use them to cut onto my fabric and i'm going to be working with my first love which is ankara cutting in this video don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already at this point if you're still watching now my fabric of choice is this black white yellow and red print this i had from last year when i made my birthday dress and i had like two to three meters left so this i'm going to be cutting my jumpsuit with and i ended up using about two and a half meters for the jumpsuits like to cut everything the jumpsuit is online because i plan to wear it in the summer but if you want to line yours you can use the same patterns to cut your lining but make the trouser shorter by one inch along the hemline so you can fold that in to finish it up It is time to sew the jumpsuit all together and this time around I'm going to be starting from the trouser because it has side pockets and for this I'm going to grab my pocket pieces and I'm going to be sewing the pockets two inches below my waistline. I found that it was just a perfect fit in terms of how my body just felt relaxed when I put my hands into the pocket and for this I'm putting the right side of the pocket against the right side of the trouser. This I'm going to do on the front and on the back so you end up with one piece per side seam and once it's been stitched in on a one centimeter seam allowance overlocked along that side seam and joined together you have your pocket bag formed this you would need to do for the left and for the right hand side so you have your two pockets sitting in the side seam of the trouser when i was done overlocking that i actually went back in to do a top stitch this part is optional but i found that doing a top stitch on the inside of the pocket that joins that edge to the seam allowance it keeps the pocket inside the seam and it doesn't fold out when you wear it or when you sit or when you move around in your piece now here i'm just going ahead to connect the side seams and this i'm going to be joining from the waist around the pocket and down the sides i'm also going to be joining the inseam or the inner trouser seam on the left and on the right hand side so once i have those side seams joined in place i can connect the left to the right leg to have a whole pair of trousers now for the sides i'm joining from the waistline around the pocket edge like so and once i get to the bottom of the edge i'm going to leave my needle in turn my piece in this direction and essentially just sew down all the way to the hemline so this way with one continuous stitch you've successfully joined the side seam of your trouser and you've also created a pocket in place that's why it's called an inseam pocket because it sits perfectly in the seam of your trouser or your skirt or wherever you decide to fit it now this is what the trouser is looking like so far this i'm going to connect along the center back edge and down the middle of the pants and up the front until I get to the bottom of that fly extension.
I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to be sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance starting from the center back edge and this I'm going to sew like I'm doing here and then when I get to the very middle point I am going to turn the piece so I'm able to sew towards the front seam the front seam I'm going to be sewing until I get to the bottom of the extension that we added for our zipper fly now this is what the pants look like so far I went ahead to overlock behind the camera so it's all tidied up on the inside and once i have that in place i also overlocked the edge of the fly extension so this i can attach the waistband to now the waistband i have fused one side with interfacing so it has some stability and structure and i left the other pair just plain the way i cut it the first thing I'm going to do with the waistband is I'm going to join them along the center back edge so I have one continuous piece that sits along the waistline of the trouser. I'm going to do this for both sets of the waistband. I'm going to just sew it on a one centimeter seam allowance and then press that seam nice and flat open. Now this is what my waistband sets are looking like. This I'm going to be joining in two steps. I'm going to grab the side that has the interfacing and this I'm going to be joining first against the right side of my trouser. Because we've added the extension on the trouser and on the waistband, your waistband should fit into the waistline of your trouser perfectly if you fold away your darts. If all the measurements have been done correctly, it should be like a seamless fit. So now that I've pinned in the first side of the waistband, I'm going to get the second side and essentially sandwich the trouser between both sets of the waistband. So that way I have that seam tucked away there and it also just makes the waistband feel a lot stiffer because it's double layered. This I'm just going ahead to pin like I did for the first one that has the interfacing ironed on the wrong side and I'm going to be sewing the waistband along the waistline. This I stitched on a 1cm seam allowance and pressed it open like so. So that way I have it ready to be connected to the top half of the jumpsuit. Moving on to the top, it is very important that you notch the point where your fly extension is on the front and then the dart along the waistline as well as the chest or the bust line and then the notches for the arm curve. I'm going to be connecting the front and the back along the shoulder and the side seam. This I'm doing with right sides facing each other and I'm going to be sewing only one centimeter seam allowance because that's how much I added to my pattern. After stitching it up, I went ahead to overlock and give my piece a nice press so it's ready to be joined to the jumpsuit bottom. So I have an easy way to just gather everything in. I have stitched the hemline of the top with the looser stitch on my machine and this I'm just gathering in. I'm just gathering as much as I can because I'm going to make that fit into the top edge of the waistband. Because it's gathered loosely, you can spread the gathers evenly across the entire waist seam and the more evenly spread it is, the more naturally it will just fall on the body. So this I'm going to be joining side seam to side seam, center front to center front, center back to center back. Once it's all pinned in place, I'm going to be sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance and I'm going to be sewing just beneath the gathering stitch I made so that it's tucked away in the seam. So I've put on the jumpsuit quickly just to check that I like the way everything is fitting so far. Um, this is what it looks like. I'm happy that I, I didn't make the waist very tight. It's actually very comfortable. I can breathe in and out. Pockets were definitely a very good idea. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add the zip that goes from here all the way down to here. So I'm using a very long zip. It's kind of in this wine color, but it's the same way I would sew in a zip fly. Just at this time, it's a really long fly that goes all the way from the bodies to waist and then down to here. So that's how I get in and out of the jumpsuit. I already know this is going to be such a comfortable thing to wear in the summer. It was like this without sleeves. It already looks really cool. But I'm obsessed. Love. I have 
put both sides of the front edges together and this I have pinned and drawn in a chalk line along the center front edge. Remember we extended that front edge by two inches on the front top on the waistband and on the front trouser as well. So I'm essentially going to be sewing with a loose stitch along that center front edge because that is where I plan to fit my zip. This I'm going to do from the top until the bottom and because I've already joined the bottom of the front trouser, I essentially don't have to think about that at this point. Once I had that in place, I went ahead to iron that particular piece open and I'm going to be putting my zip along the center front edge and sewing on the right side only at this point just the right side extension of the fly along this edge so as close as possible to the zip teeth and once i was done doing that i'm going to go back in and do a top stitch that essentially just holds the zip on the extension end and this would prevent the zip from catching fabric as you zip your piece up and down this way you have the certainty that it just would just not give you headache as you're wearing this your jumpsuit once i was done doing that i'm going to go back in and then i'm going to fold the fly towards the left side like this and sew the other side of the zip tape to the other side of the fly alone that way you have the right side stitched down i'm going to go ahead to stitch the left side sewing as close as possible to the zip teeth thank god for zip footers because i don't know how else would have been able to join zips to garments now once i'm done doing this i'm going to turn my piece inside out and if this was a regular pair of pants i would have just gone ahead to do the stitch on the front but i noticed because of how i've constructed this jumpsuit i would need to unpick the loose stitch that i did earlier on to have access to do the next stitch that i want to do this i'm just going to unpick using my small scissors and once i had that open it would be a lot easier for do the next stitch that i want to do on the front now i'm going to open up the zip like so and the aim is to stitch the fly to the right side of the zip so you create that seam that you will see on pants and on jumpsuit that essentially goes like this and then rounds off at the bottom so i'm going to take my piece of the machine i'm going to be starting from the bottom and around the bottom i'm going to be sewing with both sides of the fly overlapping each other because i want to keep them that way and then once i've sewn for about two three inches along the curve i am going to open it up and push the other side away because if you don't open it up what would happen is you're going to sew both flies close and you'll be able to open the zip once that was done around the bottom i'm just going to sew essentially on this side up until the top so if i undo or open up my zip i'm able to get in and out of the jumpsuit but because i overlap the bottom it kind of keeps the fold in the direction that i want it to be now that i have my zip stitched in place i'm going to move on to working on the collar of the jumpsuit so that way i'm able to finish the neckline of this piece I have cut two pairs for my collar and one pair I have fused with interfacing on the wrong side and the other pair I have left plain the way it was cut. And this I'm going to be joining up the center back edge first. I'm going to be sewing this up with right sides facing each other. And this I'm going to be sewing on the one centimeter seam allowance. Once I have that stitched up, I'm going to press the seam nice, flat and open. And I have both sides of my collar set to be joined to my jumpsuit neckline i'm going to be joining this in two steps because we love a beautiful finish on this channel and this i'm going to be sewing up with right sides facing each other so i'm connecting both sides of my collar pieces together so the top edge of the collar is beautifully finished and is clean once that is all done i'm going to turn it inside out and give it a nice press and this is what the collar looks like now i'm going to grab one side of the collar like so and place it along the neckline of the jumpsuit on this inside area and then i'm going to be joining this around the back neckline the front neckline and then you will have an extension that goes out on this side that 
is overlapping your zip and then the other side is going to sit into the fly extension because you know we extended the collar by the same amounts that we extended the front the waistband and the pants now this i'm going to be sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance and sewing collars can be scary i know even it scares me too on some days so take your time and if you don't get it right the first time it's okay there's nothing wrong with that just you know try again and practice a little bit more now I'm going to go back into that collar and I'm going to be folding the other side of the collar against the seam that I just made and this is going to conceal that seam and finish the collar nicely on the outside. I'm going to go in to add the sleeves into the armhole of the jumpsuit and the sleeves I'm going to be sewing along the side seams first so I'm joining them on the round because I've already joined the side seams of the top. This I'm going to be joining on a one centimeter seam allowance on my machine and once I was done sewing up the sides I'm going to go ahead to overlock that seam nice and tidy. I'm going to do this for the left and the right sleeve i'm also going to just overlock the hemline so that way once i'm done joining the sleeves i can just go in and fold and stitch that away to finish off the sleeve hem this is what the sleeve looks like so far i'm going to grab the sleeve for this side of the jumpsuit and i'm going to join it in such a way that i'm joining sleeve head to the shoulder side seam to side seam match up the notches and i'm going to be sewing both sleeve to the armhole on a one centimeter seam allowance this i'll do for the left and for the right hand side and then i'm going to go ahead to overlock that seam to finish it nicely on the inside of my jumpsuit this came out so cute you cannot imagine how cute this looks it's cute it's comfortable it's stylish and it's functional do you know how hard it is to get that combination it's very very rare and i love how everything is looking like so far for the neckline what i did was i essentially just went in and added a snap fastener so it is like a concealed way to finish up the neckline of this jumpsuit i went also into hem the legs the trouser legs to finish everything off and this is what the jumpsuit looks like on it is so comfortable it's actually ridiculous and the length is perfect because i can wear it with flats and with a little heel so i know i can easily dress this piece up or down depending on where i'm going to but i hope you guys enjoyed this project this was so much fun to make i wanted to take my time making this because i wanted it to come out really well and i'm happy i did not rush myself if you guys do enjoy this project please give this video a thumbs up if you recreate this on social media please tag me at kim Dave designs and leave any other ideas and suggestions in the comment section down below and until next time have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye the good want the bad